Israel is showing no signs of backing down after launching a major ground invasion of the Gaza Strip. The international community has tried to broker a truce, but as Chris Mitchell reports, Israel won't stop as long as Hamas remains a threat. Israel's invasion split the Gaza Strip in two as Israeli forces pursue their mission to stop Hamas rocket fire and dismantle the terror group's military leadership. This is day three of Israel's ground offensive. Behind me is northern Gaza and the town of Bet Hanun, site of some of the heaviest fighting. From here you can hear the sounds of the battle, explosions, machine gun fire and helicopter gunships. Since Israel pulled out of the Gaza Strip in August 2005, Iranian-backed terrorists led by Hamas have fired more than 6,000 rockets on Israeli communities near Gaza. And they've shown in the past week that the rocket range has expanded to put many more Israeli lives in danger. This is the latest Qassam rocket to fall here in Sderod, landed about 100 yards from where we were at a coffee shop. But one example of the Qassam rockets that have been falling by the thousands here in this town of Sderod in southern Israel. Israel's military command called up tens of thousands of reserve soldiers to join the operation if needed. I feel afraid a little bit, but uh, what we can do? This is the situation, and uh, we need to defend ourselves. On Sunday, friends and family mourned at the funeral of the first Israeli soldier killed in the Gaza ground operation. According to international estimates, more than 500 Palestinians have died in eight days of air and ground strikes. Most of them are from Hamas's military wing. Israeli leaders know their window for ground action may be limited. As international protests against Israel grow, the leaders of Britain and France have called for an immediate ceasefire, and the United Nations Security Council will take up the issue this week. But the last thing Israel needs is an operation that fails to stop Hamas from threatening Israel again. We were faced with a Hamas regime that tore up the ceasefire, that initiated rocket barrage after rocket barrage against our civilian population in the south. And we are forced to act to defend our people. Meanwhile, the Jerusalem Post reports Hamas gunmen in Gaza have shot 75 rival Fatah members in the legs, allegedly to prevent them from challenging Hamas control in the Gaza Strip. Hamas has also executed at least 35 Palestinians as collaborators with Israel. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, at the Israel-Gaza border. Thanks, Chris. Terry, it's a terrible situation there, but Israel has got to do, he's got to finish this job. And uh, joining us now from the Israeli town of Starot on the Gaza border is historian and best-selling author Michael Oren. Uh, Michael, give us your take on this ground operation. Well, the operation now about to go into its 11th day, Pat, um, is meeting all of Israeli army expectations. In many ways, the Israeli army is actually ahead of its combat schedule, uh, meeting resistance, but in many ways also less resistance than anticipated. The main problem on this side of the border anyway remains those missiles. Um, yesterday, about 45 of these missiles fell. Um, in the last 24 hours, I've had to scramble for cover to, uh, to bunkers. Uh, the Israeli Air Force, as we speak, is above us uh, in operation against those missiles. It's very important that this war ends uh, differently than the last war with Hezbollah ended in 2006 in southern Lebanon, uh, with terrorists still firing missiles at Israeli civilians. The Israeli army is doing everything in its power uh, to prevent that type of ending to this war. You wrote this weekend that the real enemy in the Gaza fight is Iran rather than Hamas, uh, and the shots are being called from Tehran. Would you amplify that? Well, I, it, Hamas, like Hezbollah, is an Iranian proxy. Um, this is one of the ways that Iran keeps Israel busy on its northern and its southern border. It keeps the international community focused on uh, border fights. And meanwhile, Iran is preparing uh, really the ultimate confrontation of Israel in the West in form of its nuclear program. Everyone's attention is diverted. And I think that's a very, very dangerous situation indeed. Well, it looks like the, uh, I don't know if you can use the term moderate hours, but Mubarak of Egypt and others are saying, uh, let's take a second look at this uh, matter with Hamas and also look at what's happening in Iran. Uh, are they concerned about the uh, growing hegemony of Iran throughout the Gulf? 
I think it's the greatest threat that Sunni Arab uh, regimes face throughout this entire region is Iran. Uh, and that is why there have been relatively restrained comments uh, from the leaders of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, even from the Palestinian Authority under Mahmoud Abbas. Uh, nobody wants to see uh, the Hamas win this battle. No one wants to see it come out of this battle. It's somehow strengthened. They all want to see Hamas's power diminished, if not eliminated entirely. And by doing that, to Hamas by by dealing it a decisive defeat, uh, Israel will also deal a defeat to Iran, really the first it's had in many years, and perhaps turn back the tide of Iranian expansionism throughout the Middle East. Well, you know, I was over there that uh, last war with Hezbollah, and it just seemed like Israel was in disarray. The army uh, kept winning uh, various uh, engagements, but the whole government uh, approach to that thing was just wrong. Uh, have they got their act together now? Well, I was in that war too, uh, Pat, and I, I shared some of your observations back then. The Army has trained rigorously over the course of the last uh, two years to remove some of those shortcomings. Uh, it has learned the lessons of Lebanon. I think one of the I think primary lessons of that war was that you cannot eliminate a missile threat to Israeli civilians surely by using the Air Force. You have to put ground troops uh, into battle uh, with all of the risks involved in that, not only to our soldiers, but to civilians on the other side. We really have no choice. It's the only way to eliminate uh, that missile threat. Another lesson of Lebanon is that we have to make sure that the enemy uh, suffers a decisive defeat and that nobody in this region can interpret the outcome of that war in any other way. Well, you know, the international community immediately jumped on Israel, and uh, apparently the uh, government caved in to pressure, and they allowed a ceasefire way before there was any kind of a clear-cut victory. Uh, it looks like the opprobrium of the uh, uh, international community is going to be directed against Israel again. You think they're going to stand up against that and say, we're going to do our job regardless? Well, there's a tremendous amount of diplomatic activity around Israel today. We're expecting the, uh, the leader of France here also this evening. Um, but from a mil purely military perspective, uh, I think that the Army feels that it has the necessary latitude and leeway to get this job done. Um, it's part of my job as uh, being an Army spokesman as in the reserves is to uh, explain Israel's military uh, objectives, to understand our military movements during the day, and hopefully generate uh, understanding if not sympathy in the international community, which will translate into more time uh, for the IDF to achieve its objectives. One last question, Michael. What is getting the job done? What would be considered victory? Considered victory if we can stop these missiles uh, once and for all, if we can fundamentally change the security situation on Israel's southern border, if we can guarantee uh, security for nearly a million Israelis who have been under uh, unremitting shell fire for the last few days, indeed for the last uh, eight years, uh, thousands and thousands of missiles, 7,200 7, missiles since 2005 alone, a really just insufferable uh, terrorist act against Israel's population, to end that once for all and to greatly diminish uh, the prestige and power of Hamas and Hamas's Iranian controllers as well. That would be victory. Michael Oren, thank you so much. Come back again. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate this very articulate spokesman who's written a tremendous book on that uh, whole six-day war situation, but it's good to have Michael with us.